This is part one of the lecture on venom snakes in the United States. Here is a quick roadmap of this lecture. We will first talk about epidemiology of snake bites in the United States, and then the classification of venomous snakes in the United States. We'll specifically talk about pit viper anatomy and uh, also the composition of the venom of the crotalids or the pit vipers. And then we'll talk about cl clinical classification of bites. So let's start off with epidemiology. There are anywhere from 7,000 to 8,000 bites of ven by venomous snakes annually in the United States. And uh, there are less than 15 deaths annually from this. This is much more of a problem worldwide. And uh, compare these numbers to world estimates of snake bites, which is 2.5 million venomous snake bites that occur internationally, with uh, 125,000 deaths annually. And uh, in the United States, uh, most of the venomous bites uh, are by pit vipers, so 98%. There are two venomous families native to the United States, the Viperidae and the Elapidae. The Viperidae family contains a subfamily, Crotalinae, or pit vipers, crotalids. And there are 18 species in the United States of pit vipers. Most of those are rattlesnakes. In the elapid family, there is a subfamily of elapids, and that's your coral snakes, and there are three species native to the United States. In New York State, there are three venomous species, and all of them are pit vipers. It's the timber rattlesnake, the eastern masago rattlesnake, and copperhead. So how does one tell apart a pit viper from a non-venomous snake in the United States? Uh, there are a couple of things you should look for. First of all, pit vipers, they have triangular heads, not rounded heads. They also have elliptical pupils instead of round pupils. And they have heat-sensitive pits between their eyes, and these assist with the prey location and striking. Pit vipers also have hinged, hollow, needle-shaped fangs, and those are up to two centimeters long. At rest, they are folded against uh, the roof of the mouth, but during the strike, the maxilla swings open, rotating the fangs perpendicular to the palate. And these fangs uh, are fragile and loosen with time, so there is replacement fangs that constantly are uh, produced uh, posterior to the maxilla. And um, other things to look for, uh, the rattle and the scales. So some pit vipers are rattlesnakes, and the coral rattle is composed of loosely interlocked hollow segments of keratin that make a buzzing sound when the snake rapidly moves its tail. It is a warning sound, and uh, not all rattlesnake snakes will rattle before they strike. Uh, new segments of keratin get added each time the snake sheds its keratinous corneal skin layer. However, many times these just break off. So young snakes have a very short rattle, while older snakes might have a short or a long rattle. Other things you look for are uh, subcortal scales, and that's on the underbelly side, and uh, they are in a single row in pit vipers, but in a double row in non-venomous snakes and coral snakes in the United States. So we'll just go over some of the rattlesnakes that I found uh, in the United States. So this is the Mojave Rattler, and uh, uh, this one is the only pit viper that has uh, neurotoxin in its venom. It's found in Arizona, Nevada, Southern California, Mexico, Southwest Utah, Southern New Mexico, and parts of Texas. And here you have Eastern Diamondback. It's a very large snake as well. Um, this is the Timberlake and the Eastern Massasagua snake, and these are found in central New York and southern, southern Ontario to southwest Illinois and eastern Iowa. Um, the Massasagua snake is a th considered a threatened species due to its loss of habitat, uh, which is the wetlands. 
here we've got the uh, cotton moth, another pit viper, it's a water moccasin. And this one is found in southeastern United States. Here's a copperhead, it's also a pit viper, and uh, it is found in 29 states, so it's very uh, widespread. And it frequently causes bites, uh, but its venom load is less than others, so it's seldom lethal. So uh, what is important to consider about pit viper and animation? First of all, uh, the amount and composition of venom varies among the species. So knowing the species is important. The Mojave uh, rattlesnake bite is very different from a cottonmouth snake bite. And then uh, consider the severity of animation also depends on these other things. How deep the fangs pierced, the health and the size of the victim, if this is a frail elderly uh, patient or a very young child, uh, venom will have much more of an effect on their um, health and how they and their outcome. The allergy to the venom, also how agitated the snake was, uh, it is most likely to inject more venom if it's agitated. Uh, the location of the bite, uh, a very peripheral location, is advantageous um, to basically a bite to a neck where you might be piercing your carotids or um, big vessels. And also the size uh, and the age of the snake is important. The bigger the size of the snake, uh, the more venom it produces and the more likely it is to inject greater amount of venom. So uh, these are some um, of the systems that get affected. Uh, with pit viper and venomation, so um, most of the venom causes uh, local tissue necrosis and systemic symptoms that could affect your coagulation system, cardiovascular system, and nervous system. And for the nervous system, it's mostly the Mojave um, rattlesnake that has the neurotoxin. Uh, it is hard to determine the severity of venomation by initial symptoms, so, so it's important to watch these people. For progression of symptoms and about 25% of uh, pit viper snake bites are actually dry bites so there are fang marks but venom was not injected. Let's talk briefly about the toxins uh, that uh, compose crippling venom. Uh, so uh, we've got phospholipase A2 which is a neurotoxin and it greatly increases lethality of pit viper and venomations that's why uh, the Mojave rattlesnake bite um, is very dangerous and basically uh, this neurotoxin binds to presynaptic calcium channels and inhibits acetylcholine release. This blocks neurotransmission and neuromuscular junctions and uh, this can cause paralysis of muscles or respirations uh, leading to respiratory difficulties. Um, it also damages muscle cell membranes and this can progress to diffuse myonecrosis and rhabdomyolysis. Then we've got metalloproteinases, uh, and these are the enzymes uh, that cause uh, uh, a lot of local destructive effect and intensify inflammation. Hemorrhagins, uh, these are a type of uh, metalloproteinases, and they cause leakage of red blood cells out of vasculature, leading to ecchymosis and fluid shifts. There's also thrombin-like enzymes that cause conceptive coagulopathy. And we've got disintegrants, which are anti-clotting um, enzymes. And we've got bradykinins. Uh, these cause hypotension, vomiting, and pain. And uh, then hyaluronases uh, and these decrease the viscosity of connective tissues, allowing venom to spread. In the next few slides, we will go over how to classify um, pit viper envenomations from minimal envenomation to severe. So for the minimal envenomation, you need to have um, the puncture wounds, and uh, you should have uh, one of the following, either swelling at the bite site, local ecchymosis, or local pain. And you should not have any of the systemic symptoms. So this is minimal envenomation. Here is a picture of the digits that were bitten. With moderate envenomations, uh, you get swelling that extends up the extremity. 
you might have very severe pain at the site, and you start getting some mild systemic symptoms uh, like nausea, vomiting, generalized weakness. With severe envenomations, uh, you start seeing more significant soft tissue swelling and pain and necrosis, and uh, the systemic symptoms uh, become much more pronounced. So you might have tachycardia, tachypnea, respiratory distress, and pulmonary edema, many times requiring intubation, uh, significant uh, shock state, um, so hypotension, there might be uh, bleeding, red cell and blood platelet lysis, and coagulation abnormalities. Uh, and the labs will be significantly abnormal. So uh, you will see coagulopathy, hemolysis, and anemia, some renal dysfunction as well.